Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'll be showing you how to make a zebra cake. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and while today's recipe might look complicated, I think you're going to be surprised by how easy it actually is. Even the beginner baker can handle today's recipe. Now to get started, you're going to want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to be using my stand mixer to make today's recipe, but if you don't have one, you can use an electric can mixer instead. Now the first ingredient that you need is two cups of granulated sugar. Next, you'll need two and three fourths cup of cake flour. Now with a lot of my recipes, I recommend using all purpose flour, but using cake flour in this one just gives the cake a tighter crumb. It makes those zebra stripes a little bit more defined, so I recommend using it here. I found with all purpose flour, I don't really get the same results, and sometimes the cakes tend to cave in a little bit, so I really recommend cake flour if you can get your hands on it. We'll also be adding a tablespoon, yes, a full tablespoon of baking powder and just a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to stir together our dry ingredients with our mixer until they're all completely combined. Now turn your mixer to low speed and we are going to gradually add six tablespoons of unsalted butter. You want this to be slightly softened. Now we're going to add one tablespoon at a time and we're going to continue to mix and not add the next tablespoon until the first one is well incorporated. Once your butter is totally incorporated, the mixture should resemble coarse sandy crumbs. Now this method is a little bit different from some of my other cake recipes I've shared in the past. This is actually basically the reverse creaming method if you've ever heard of that. The reason I like it for this zebra cake method is because again, it helps produce a tighter crumb, which just makes those white and black stripes just more contrasting. It just gives the cake a nicer effect. So let's take a peek at this real quickly. I wanna show you what the consistency looks like. It does take a couple minutes for it to come together, but if you have a stand mixer, that'll do all of the work for you. Now, if you've been baking cakes with me for a while now, you know that I love to use a blend of both butter and oil because it gives the cake the best flavor and the best possible texture. So of course, I'm going to be using some oil here as well today. I'm using canola oil, but vegetable oil or any other neutral one will work as well. I'm just going to turn my mixer to low speed and pour that in. That's two thirds cup of oil. Now you'll want to measure out three fourths cup of whole milk. And I like to do this in a large measuring cup because I'm going to be adding a half cup of sour cream in with the milk. I love the addition of sour cream because it helps make this cake extra moist and flavorful. Now along with that, we're going to be adding one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Now I really recommend you use clear vanilla extract if you can get it just because it encourages the cake crumb to be extra white and this is a zebra cake, so I feel like it should be. But if your grocery store is out of clear extract and has been for months, then regular vanilla will work just fine. The cake won't be quite as white as I like it to be, but it'll be pretty close. Now I'm going to whisk these ingredients together now I like to combine all of the wet ingredients here in a separate measuring cup, just because it helps ensure that the ingredients are going to be really well combined, a little bit better than if I added them individually to our other cake batter. Also, if you have a measuring cup that's large enough, it's not an extra dish, so it's not a big deal. So our batter is pretty thick at this point, so we're just going to turn our mixer to low speed and gradually add our milk mixture until it's completely combined. Make sure you stir until your batter is completely combined and nice and smooth. I am going to pause here, use my spatula to scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl, just because sometimes some butter or some of your flour mixture can just settle there. You don't want any pockets of isolated ingredients. So we still have a few lumps, so I'm just going to mix this a little bit longer. If you're wondering where are the eggs in this cake recipe, don't worry, we're going to get to them right now. You are going to need six egg whites for this recipe, just the whites. You can discard the yolks or I will share some recipes in the notes below of different recipes I have that use just egg yolks. Now this step is really the trickiest part of the whole recipe because it's very important that you crack your eggs into a completely clean, completely dry, completely grease-free bowl and you don't get any of the yolk in with the egg whites. Next, you're going to need an electric mixer with completely clean, dry, and grease-free beaters. And we're going to beat these on high speed until we get stiff peaks. It is going to take a couple minutes, just have some patience. I'll show you exactly what it's supposed to look like. So here we have stiff peaks. As you can see, when I pull the beaters out of the egg white mixture, the peaks that form, they hold firm. They hold their shape. They don't recede into themselves and they don't fold over. 
So we're going to take our nicely whipped egg whites and we are going to gently combine them into our batter that we just prepared. So we're done with our electric mixer at this point. You want to be very intentional about stirring carefully and stirring by hand. You want all of your ingredients to be well combined. You want these egg whites to be nicely combined into the batter, but you want to be gentle so that you don't deflate them. After all, we just spent all of that time with whipping them up to stiff peaks. If you can tell, I'm folding the ingredients together, just kind of using my spatula to gently, continuously fold it. I'm not whisking it really hard or stirring it really hard. I'm being gentle. So we have our beautiful, mostly white batter. Could be a little bit whiter, but I'm not gonna go off about the grocery store again. But we still need to divide this so we have a chocolate batter to make our zebra stripes. Now, if you have a scale, this is super easy. You're just going to pour 580 grams into a separate mixing bowl. You should have 900 grams of batter left in your original mixing bowl. Now, if you don't have a scale, first of all, you should definitely get one because they're amazing. But anyway, if you don't have a scale, you can divide this by cups instead. Just measure out three cups of batter into a different mixing bowl. You'll be left with about five cups in your original bowl. Now, this smaller bowl here, we are going to turn into our chocolate batter. Now we're going to be adding quite a few ingredients to this batter so that it's not just the right color, but it also has a nice, rich chocolate taste and an appropriately moist texture. The first thing you'll need is two tablespoons of really hot water. We're going to add one fourth cup of cocoa powder into this hot water. Now I recommend dark cocoa powder if you could find it just because it gives those stripes a darker, closer to black color, which is more appropriate for a zebra cake. Now I'm going to whisk the water and cocoa powder together because adding the cocoa powder to really hot water helps to bloom it, which helps, which means that we're enhancing the flavor and you're going to get a richer, more chocolatey taste from those chocolate stripes. Now cocoa powder and water have a tendency to dry out cake a little bit. So in order to bring back that moisture, we're going to be adding an additional two tablespoons of sour cream. We're also compromising the sweetness a little bit by adding that cocoa powder, which can be pretty bitter. So I'm also going to be adding two tablespoons of granulated sugar. Now whisk these all together really well. I know some recipes might add cocoa powder directly to the batter, but it's just not going to give you the same flavor and texture. So I really recommend this extra dish right here, this extra step. Now just carefully stir this into your smaller bowl of batter. Make sure we get all of that chocolate goodness in there. And again, be gentle with your batter because there are still egg whites in here and they've already gone through a little bit of trauma. So try to take it easy on them. All right, now we're going to take these batters and make them actually look like a zebra pattern. You are going to be baking this in two eight inch round pans. I really recommend lining the bottoms of your pans with parchment paper and then just greasing the sides with a little bit of baking spray. The parchment paper just about guarantees that your cakes will not stick. So that removes a little bit of the stress. My cake pans are two inches deep. I recommend you don't use any pans that are more shallow than that. Now I'm going to be starting with my white cake batter and I'm just going to use an ice cream scoop or you can use a one third cup measuring cup and just portion this batter right into the center of the cake pan. Now you do not need to spread that. We're just going to take another measuring cup. This is a one third cup measuring cup and I'm going to scoop a portion of the chocolate batter and just drop that right in the center. And we are just going to repeat alternating with the white and the chocolate batter until you've used all of it. And I do recommend starting and ending with the white batter. As you can see, I'm taking care that no two same colored rings of batter touch each other, or at least I'm trying to minimize it as much as possible. If a ring of white batter runs into another ring of white batter or the same with the chocolate batter, then what you're going to end up with is a marbled effect rather than nice zebra stripes. Now let's take these over to our 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven where they're going to need to bake for about 38 to 40 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean or with moist crumbs. Let the cakes cool in their pans for about 10 to 15 minutes. Then I like to use a knife just to loosen the cake from the pan, just in case it's stuck. And then carefully invert onto a cooling rack to cool completely. Thanks to the parchment paper, we have no problem with the cake sticking in the pan. 
Typically my cakes bake up nice and level, but if they don't, which today these are domed a little bit, what you can do is let them cool completely. And then I flip them over because the bottom's always nice and level. And once they're cool, just use a sharp serrated knife to just level off the top. This will make sure your cake is nice and even. And the cake top is the best part, so that's an added bonus. Look at that, you're already getting a peek at how cool this cake is going to look when we cut into it. Now all that's left to do is assemble and frost our cake, and today I am using my white chocolate frosting, which is an excellent choice and pairs perfectly with this cake. Just wait until I cut into this. Are you guys so impressed by my decorating skills? I can bake a great cake, but I can't decorate one to save my life. You guys ready to cut into this cake? I promise it's a lot prettier on the inside than it is on the outside. And that is how you make this amazing zebra cake completely from scratch. If you guys enjoyed today's recipe and if you try it out, please let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Good.